some of them down, right? Or like parts of some of them down, that's fine. Then you know, okay, now I have to do the rest. So glycolysis, where are we? Where does it happen? Cytoplasm or cytosol, right? So you can say either of those things. What do we start with? Glucose, okay. Do you see some other stuff that I put in there? Oh, I also said NAD plus and ADP. You don't necessarily have to actually put the ADP down there, honestly, because oftentimes when we say ATP is being generated, we kind of know automatically that, okay, we're putting ADP into the reaction. So as long as you have down that we start with glucose and NAD plus, that's fine, okay? What are our react or what are our products for glycolysis? When we split the actual glucose, we get pyruvate, right? And so you should know that pyruvate, you don't have to know the actual, this is the formula. You don't necessarily have to know that, but you should know that each pyruvate has three carbons, okay? Um, but this is the actual formula. And then you also know that you get two ATPs and that's net, right? So remember, you can write a little note if you like, net two ATP. It takes two and you get four out. So we really generate just on, we generate two ATPs net. We spend two, we gain four back. So we generate two ATPs. And then we also generate two NADHs, right? So this is what's telling you. Remember, I told you, right, it's nice to memorize the products first because then you kind of know what the reactants have to be. And also, if you memorize the products of this reaction, if you have the order down, then you bet that that's a reactant to the next reaction, right? So pyruvate, if that is a product of step number one, it's going to be the reactant of step number two. Exactly. So so if you memorize these first, I think that that helps a little bit. Then you can kind of go back and understand that. Okay, so we got that. So our stored forms of energy, ATP and NADH, right? So we create both of those from glycolysis. So one way to quiz yourself is actually like this, where you don't even talk about reactants and products, but maybe just what are the energy molecules we get out of this, right? So to memorize several components of the whole thing. Okay, then we get to pyruvate oxidation. Where is it happening? Happening? Mitochondrial matrix, right, in the very center. And we start with, like I said, we have to start with the two pyruvates because that was the product from the pre from glycolysis. So if you follow the carbons, right, from the glucose, the backbone of the glucose, they're now in the pyruvate, right? And the energy, if you follow that, we have that in this form right now. Okay, we actually here are gonna create some more NADH. Did you see that as a product, right? So if you're gonna create that, then you have to have NAD plus as an input or as a reactant. The other thing we need is this one that we talked a little bit about, right? Coenzyme A, who was saying, oh, it's coenzyme A that enters the citric acid cycle, right? that it's not, but it's a good answer anyway. I like that you kind of know, right? That actually is part of this reaction. It's a reactant to create acetyl-CoA. And it is unfortunate that those two kind of sound similar, but think about it this way, coenzyme and enzyme is involved in a reaction to happen. So try to think of it, okay, it's the coenzyme we add, and then acetyl-CoA is the product. Yes. acetyl group there's an acetyl group that is yeah that's the difference so it's not a huge difference uh but yeah it's just a more accurate name for exactly what's some people are probably gonna say coenzyme a right like as a short version it, it's the same thing it's just yeah it's just like okay we're actually specifically descri describing it it's like saying water or you know two hydrogens and an oxide kind of Kind of like that. So acetyl-CoA is different though, right? Acetyl-CoA actually has more carbons than, co than coenzyme A, right? If you look at that one where you're following them in the light blue and the, right, the different colors, go back to that slide. Um, okay, so this, 
This is the product. Um, you also get carbon dioxide, right? This is where the first carbons from the glucose actually are leaving as gas, right? In the first step, we split the glucose into half and we got two, three carbon molecules. Glucose has six, we split it in half and pyruvate has three each, right? And what's gonna happen is all of them ultimately have to end up as carbon dioxide, right? Like all of them have to be breathed out as carbon dioxide. And the first time that happens is this step, pyruvate oxidation. All right, stored form of energy, NADH. Then we get to the citric acid cycle. So that's happening in the matrix as well. So two things in the matrix. What do you start with? You start with what you got out of this one, right? So the product here was acetyl-CoA and here you go, acetyl-CoA. So this coenzyme A and acetyl-CoA, same thing, right? It's just abbreviated here. So these, you can write it out if you want. Acetyl-coenzyme A, same thing as this or write acetyl-CoA up here, right? It's the same thing. All right, um, six NAD pluses and two FADs. All right, and you also need this guy, right? Do you remember oxaloacetate is another one? And that one also happens to be a product, right? This is the only time you're really seeing something that's both an input and an output because it's what? What is this? It's a circle right? It's a cycle. So one of these things actually ends up regenerating and that's why it's going around and around. So the thing that you keep adding to it is the acetyl-CoA. The oxaloacetate keeps regenerating from actually going around and around and around. And this is where you're generating a lot of NADH, right? So lots of NADH being generated, which is really good because we need that for the electron transport chain, right? So you do that, you also get two ATPs, um, and you get FADH2. Now, this is the step where the carbons are all gone. After the citric acid cycle, right? Do you see how many carbons are here? Four leading per glucose, right? How many left over here? Two, so what's four plus two? Six, right? And how many did the glucose have? Six. So at this point, all of the carbons from the glucose actually have left this gas. And what do we have left? A bunch of electron carriers, right? And some ATP. So at this point, you can't really follow the carbons anymore. You can only really follow the energy at this point. Okay, now this is another thing I really like. Did I tell you this, right? That this is step number three and you get three energy forms from step number three. Did I tell you that already? Mm -hmm. It's one of the ways to memorize, right? So the citric acid cycle, if you memorize the order, that's step number three, we're actually gonna get all of the energy molecules from step number three, right? So ATP, NADH, FADH2, all of those three are generated in the citric acid cycle. Okay, and then we get to oxidative phosphorylation, right? Where is it happening? Well, there's a few places. You have the inner membrane, right? Because that's where the electron transport chain is located. And that's also where ATP synthase is located. But then you also pump protons into the inner membrane space. So I put that in there as well, right? Because that's, that's actually involved in oxidative phosphorylation. And it starts with these guys, lots of them, right? NADH, FADH2, and also oxygen, right? Remember, if we don't, okay, that's, it's an input, but it's a start with, can get confusing, but you still have to have oxygen to keep this going, right? It is a reactant in this part. Okay, and then what do we get out of it? Well, a bunch of ATP, this is the whole point, right? So that's the big guy, that's the big one. But what else are we, you don't need, you don't need to mem, this part, NAD plus and FAD, it's kind of important for what's to come. What is to come? What's the next topic? No, well, good, but before then. Fermentation, did you guys read about fermentation? Okay, fermentation is something we're gonna briefly talk about. It's coupled to glycolysis. But basically, if you look at glycolysis up here, do you see what do you need except for glucose? Do you need NAD plus? Where do you think you get that NAD plus from? There. Right? 
right? So here, these carriers are dropping off the electrons over here, right? And now you have this guy empty again, so it can be used for this pro process, right? So this is where fermentation comes into play. It's actually when you're not doing this part anymore because you don't have oxygen, then you need an alternative way to create this guy, right? So this is not a product that we focus a lot on, right? But it is absolutely necessary to keep driving glycolysis because if you don't have that, then you have nothing to put the electrons onto, right? You have nothing that can become reduced. All right, and the stored forms is obviously ATP, right? That's what we get from oxidative phosphorylation. Now, so I was trying to tell you like different ways of study. Don't, don't study all like, oh, in the same order. Try to break it up. I like to look at this too, where in, ask your friend, right? Like in what pathways do we create NADH? Like ask questions like that. They're not exactly like give me the exact products, but which ones, which ones actually create NADH? Look at it. It's all of them except for oxidative phosphorylation, right? So if you start doing that kind of stuff, it's easier to remember, okay? Um, and then pathway citric acid cycle, which ones is that? Oh, that, that generates the three, all of them, right? So that's another way to kind of remember, okay? That's, that's something that's being produced there. Um, ATP, right? Where are we creating ATP? Well, that's glycolysis, citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. So where is the substrate level ATP being created? In the first two, right? ATP and, or uh, glycolysis and citric acid cycle. Right? This guy, it's oxidative phosphorylation, obviously. Does that make sense? So spend some time, print this out, qu ask questions like that, quiz yourself, quiz a friend, and go back and forth. Okay, so this is actually wrapping it up. Oxygen, we've talked a lot about, but it is important because it's here, right? What complex is this? What do we call it, complex number? Four, right. So it doesn't have it labeled here, but that's the one that's so important because at the end of that, oxygen is what's gonna be accepting those electrons and that generates the water, right? And in this process, you are also, right, like we said, you're regenerating these, ox they're oxidized form of the electron carriers, okay. So what's happening? It's oxygen removes low energy electrons, removes them, ex or more like accepts them, takes them up, and that allows new electrons to enter constantly, right? These electrons come from these guys, NADH and FADH2, and donating the electrons oxidizes these carriers back to this. And these are needed for the other parts of cellular respiration. Right? If this can't happen, right? If you can't oxidize these, all cellular respiration stops. So that means if you don't have oxygen at the very end here, then you can't give up electrons here. You can't give up electrons here. The whole thing gets backed up and it stops, right? And then you can't make ATP because you're not creating this proton gradient. Okay, so this is fermentation. So if you are like don't spend uh, all of your time on fermentation. I'll tell you exactly what you need to know about fermentation, okay? Fermentation, where do you, you need to know where it happens, okay? It's, remember that it's coupled with glycolysis, first of all, okay? Just, it's coupled with glycolysis. So it's gonna happen in the same spot as glycolysis happens. Where does glycolysis happen? Cytoplasm, very good. So that's where it's happening. And what, uh, what is it? Well, it's a process in order to be able to carry out glycolysis and make ATP without oxygen present, right? Have you ever gone to the gym and you're exercising so hard that you can't keep up with the oxygen demand and you create lactic acid in the process and you get sore? This is what you're doing. Your cells actually start doing some fermentation, okay? So fermentation is, if you look at this up here, it's coupled with glycolysis, okay? For glycolysis, glucose becomes pyruvate in glycolysis, right? And we're also generating NADH in that process, right? So going from NAD to NADH. You can put pluses here if it makes you feel better, right? I like to do that, NAD plus. Okay, so we have to have this as an input for glycolysis. As we said, that is being generated 
in oxidative phosphorylation, right? That NAD plus is being generated there as a byproduct, okay? So now with that oxygen, where we're not getting this from the electron transport chain, instead what, what can happen is pyruvate can actually be converted to ethanol or lactate. And when that happens, you actually are oxidizing NADH in the process. <laughs> So that will create the NAD that you need to drive glycolysis forward. And there's two different ways to do that. There's alcohol fermentation and there's lactic acid fermentation. So alcohol fermentation you've heard of, these are, if you think about the organisms that don't have mitochondria, they can't make ATP by oxidative phosphorylation. They can do it by glycolysis and fermentation because glycolysis gives a very little amount of ATP, right? But maybe that's all those organisms need because they're not multicellular complex organisms. So they can keep doing glycolysis and fermentation even without oxygen present, right? So it looks like this, and then you get ethanol as a byproduct. So if this is confusing to you, I know a lot of people get freaked out when you see chemical reactions, then don't spend all your time on this, just memorize this. Memorize that fermentation is a way to keep glycolysis going when there's no oxygen present. It's a way to generate ATP without oxygen, right? Memorize that because it creates NAD, NAD plus, right? And you need that for glycolysis. Does that make sense? So fermentation is a way for cells to generate NAD plus. That is basically the point of it, is to generate NAD plus so that you can use that for the glycolysis process, right? So if nothing else, just memorize that part and that should cover you for the exam, right? Okay. It's when oxygen is not present. We also get a lot of carbon dioxide from this. So that's just a side note. Uh, you know that beer has carbon dioxide, the bubbles in the beer, obviously uh, carbon dioxide. We don't tend to do alcohol fermentation. We'd all be drunk after the gym if we did this, right? We do lactic acid fermentation, so just know that there's two different types of fermentation. They're very, very similar. The only thing is, right, the byproduct here, we have lactate in lactic acid fermentation and in alcohol fermentation, it's obviously alcohol, right? So it depends on what organism will do one or the other. So we tend to do, right, lactate, lactic acid fermentation when there's no oxygen present. We can only do, our cells can only do that for so long, right? It doesn't generate, and glycolysis, how many ATPs do you get out of it? Two, how many do you get from oxidative phosphorylation? 30 something, right? So the two ATPs will not be enough to sustain all of your cells for very long. It's kind of like, okay, for a little bit maybe to get some extra, but it's not gonna sustain you, a multicellular organism for that long, right? So it is this, right? It's used to regenerate NAD plus. That's what you should memorize. In, in the lack of oxygen. Okay, so lots of people do this. Um, I do a lot of right sourdough baking and that they definitely, you have lactic acid in there. You can smell it, right? That's the sour. That's where it's coming from. It's that byproduct. Also your yogurts, they're sour, right? They have a sour taste to them because of this process. This is what's happening. They're making lactic acid, those cells. Okay. It's an, the other thing that you should memorize, so this slide, it's an aerobic pathway if it's happening where? There's gonna be so, probably a sorting question. Okay, sort into aerobic and anaerobic pathways. How are you gonna memorize which ones are which out of all of these things that we talked about? Not really, so that's a good one. I like that because that's what it sounds like, okay? No, just do it like this, I'm telling you. If it's in the mitochondria, it is aerobic. If it's not in the mitochondria, it's anaerobic. So which are the two processes we've talked about that don't happen in the mitochondria? They happen in the cytosol or cytoplasm. Glycolysis and? Fermentation. Those are the only two, okay? Those two are anaerobic. The rest of them, you're gonna sort into the aerobic, okay? Even if oxygen isn't directly involved, we call them aerobic processes because they can't happen unless the next step happens, right? Like, so they're paired together. 
glycolysis, fermentation, and aerobic processes. The rest, aerobic. Everybody got that quick. I want to see 100% on that question. Okay. That's all. All right. Now, oh, one more thing. Actually, we do have to talk about this. This is not all that important. Do you understand? Uh, you're not going to be tested on this really, but it's not necessarily always like you're going to, if you see um, more advanced courses, it's not always glucose. It's not, you know, it's not always pyruvate. There's some other molecules that can enter the pathway that kind of look similar to those. Just a heads up if you see that in future courses. For us, this is not hugely important. Um, it's just a little react. This is important though. There'll be at least one or two questions on feedback inhibition. Does anyone know from your reading what feedback inhibition is? Feedback inhibition. What does it mean? What does it look like on this figure? If you're looking at this figure, what do you think it looks like? Say it again. Yeah, it's like a stop. Very good. Okay, there's a bunch of stops here, right? So what is this? You're looking at glucose becoming pyruvate, becoming acetyl-CoA. This is cellular respiration, right? And what is it creating in the end? ATP. So feedback inhibition means there's a ton of ATP. It's actually going to inhibit these other pathways. Why would that be useful? This is important because it doesn't just happen in cellular respiration. There's a lot of biological pathways that work like this. The product actually inhibits the reactions or it slows them down, right? Because you don't want to make too much product. I mean, imagine hormones, for an example, you make a ton of a hormone that makes you crazy, right? So the hormone in and of itself can actually stop the hormone from being produced, right? It's, that's why it's called feedback inhibition. The feedback is, hey, there's enough ATP here already. Let's not like keep doing this. We don't need more of this molecule. So it absolutely is important in cellular respiration, but it's really important for other processes as well. Okay, so many of the enzymes involved in respiration, you have to think about the fact that there's enzymes involved here and they're sensitive to ATP. So they're inactive. Enzymes speed up reactions, right? So if enzymes are inactive, they can't speed up the reaction. It won't happen as fast. So this process will slow down if there's a lot of product. So know that word, feedback inhibition. Does anybody have a question about that? Is it clear? It's pretty intuitive, right? Like it's pretty smart. The product slows things down. Okay, um, the other kind of footnote to this is, of course, other factors like pH changes uh, due to lactic acid builds, buildup also will influence or slow down enzyme activity. So enzymes are susceptible to changes in temperature, uh, and changes in pH, all of these different things. Okay. Do, do, do. Right, all of, some of these enzymes, right, they're thinking about therapeutics, think about pharmaceuticals, think about drugs for patients, right? Lots of these enzymes, right, that they're made pharmaceutically to be able to help people. And that's another thing I'd like to understand, you know, nursing, the nursing profession is hardcore. It's not holding, like some people, you know, it's not holding a hand, right? You have to understand, if you don't understand kind of the mechanisms behind the pharmaceuticals, you can't really, accurately prescribe these, right? So it is important to understand the mechanism or you're not gonna be very successful or not very good at your job. Okay, but you're gonna be fine. All right, this is the end, end, end of cellular respiration. Basically, we made, you know, we took glucose. What did we do with it? We oxidized the crap out of it. We took all the energy, we put it into ATP. Now we have a bunch of ATP that can be used to drive other reactions, right? That's basically the sum of it. Because the energy directly from the glucose, our cells don't know how to use. They don't know how to use that. And so that's the summary. And now we're actually gonna start on, um, the next part. So you can pull up the slides for, 
photosynthesis. If you understand, I know I've been super repetitive, but I'm, I'm doing that on purpose because I want to spend a lot of time on the same material so you hear it over and over again. If you understand cellular respiration, if you understand, you know, memorize some of it at this point, you understand kind of what it's about, photosynthesis will not be as difficult. It's much easier if you've kept up to this point because it'll, lots of this will make sense. Okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, here. All right, so we need glucose, right? Can we make glucose using the energy from the sun? No, right? We cannot create this energy molecule by harnessing the energy from the sun. That's what plants do, and that's exactly what photosynthesis is, right? We have to eat the glucose from other organisms that do do photosynthesis for us to be able to generate ATP out of it. Now plants, they do both, right? They do cellular respiration and photosynthesis. So they can literally create their own energy molecules and they can also do cellular respiration to create ATP. That's pretty cool. What that means is that the sun is really the source of energy for, for almost all of our organisms on our earth, right? The sun is what's going to make glucose and then we use that to make ATP. There's a few terms that you need to know about this and it's autotrophs versus heterotrophs, okay? So this is voc vocab. If you're thinking about auto, when you hear auto, what do you think automatic, right? 